Psalm 30. Are you there? All right, three of you. Let's go there together, all three of us. All right. I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. Somebody say rescue. I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. How many people here have been rescued from the Lord before? Oh, Father. Then we have nothing to complain about. I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. O oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help. Somebody say help. help. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. Our brother just earlier, as you heard it, as he gave testimony, look what he, look what he did. He cried out to help. Help me, Lord. And look what it says. And you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O oh Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise His holy name. I want to key in on some of these right here. For His anger lasts only a moment, but His favor lasts a lifetime. There may be some individuals here that you have a bad misconception of your Heavenly Father, and you think He's always angry at you. A lot of people, even non-Christians, in conversations that I have with people like, no, I, you know, God's just angry. And let me tell you what, does God get angry and grieved? Yes, He does. But we also serve a God of joy. I, I'm just telling you, He is not some old man in the sky. I'm just come against a thought right now that's in some people's hearts, even from what you've been told when you were a child. He is not some old man in the sky with a big hammer to knock you down every time you make a mistake. That is not our Heavenly Father. I'm so sick of that image that, peop- that the enemy has put in people's minds. That he's, he's paying you back for all your mistakes. That, you all, that everything you've done, that he's paying you back. He's an angry father. He's an angry God. No, he's a loving father. And now, listen, now, if you're confusing discipline with anger, he's also a father because he loves us. He's going to discipline us. All right? And I hate it. The Bible even says we hate it, that discipline, because it's painful, but in the end it leads to holiness and life. And so I want to encourage you that, look what it says right here. His anger lasts only, what is it? Uh, But his favor lasts what? Exclamation point. Look at this. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. When I was prosperous, I said, look at, look, notice how the psalmist here, if you, just, if you pay attention to every sentence, he said, when I was prosperous, I said, nothing can stop me now. And through his lips, he's like, your favor, O Lord, made me as secure as a mountain. Then he says this, then you turned from, away from me and I was shattered. I cried out to the Lord. I cried out to you, O Lord. I begged the Lord for mercy, saying, what will you gain if I die? If I sink into the grave, can my dust praise you? Can it tell of your faithfulness? Help me, Lord, and have mercy on me. Help me, O Lord. Last two verses. You have turned my mourning, M-O-U-R. You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. I think we have it right here on the screen. Can we read that verse? We need to get that in our spirit today. Verse 11, 1, 2, 3. You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. That I might, what's the reason for it? That I might sing praises to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. This morning, I want to talk to you about where's the joy? Where's the joy? Let's pray. Holy Spirit, in these few minutes that we have here together to dive into your word, in all the craziness of the Christmas season, the busyness, and us going here and there and everywhere, Father, we just silence the noise of the world just for a few minutes, God. And we just kind of still our soul and our mind and our thoughts even things that maybe many of us are doing this afternoon and tonight, God, just those things are important. But right now, we really want to hear your word. And so, Father, we just steal all that and we say, speak to us, Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would speak through me. 
Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. In this Christmas season, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. I don't, have, have you seen the traffic lately? I just personally just want to stay at home. It's, it's been crazy. Um, yesterday, Lisa was telling me that she went to Kohl's, and uh, like the, there was six cashiers on both sides, and the lines were going way out on the sides, just going out, and people everywhere. And there, there's not a lot of joy in the house going on because of everything going on. And our schedules are packed with parties and this and that and everything. But the Christmas season is supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. A time of joy, a time of peace, a time of family, a time of sharing, a time of meals together. Just a time of loving each other. But for many people, Christmas can be a really, really stressful time. Now, I came across a video that uh, just kind of blew me away a little bit. I'm getting my team ready here. And uh, it can even be stressful when a bunch of kids are putting on a little Christmas program and all of a sudden one of the sheep wants to take baby Jesus away from the rest of the play. Maybe you saw this over the weekend. Take a look at this real quick if you can. I'm going to maybe do a little. So everything's looking good. Go ahead and play. If you write anything oh, on your computer, okay. you need to get Grammarly. I yeah. write pretty Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Stressful holidays. I feel my temperature rising right now as we speak. So <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, so stress in the Christmas season. We're good. Got it? Ron, it doesn't always happen to you, my brother. <laughs> yeah, I guess. That's a, that's a better word than I was thinking, so uh, <laughs> we good? We got it? All right. Here we go. Bring a little Jesus back in the room. So there's the sheep, and she is uh, starting to remove the blankie from the the, oh, now she's going to take Jesus out of the manger. And she's, she's having a fine time, but Mary is starting to get a little ticked. Not, yeah, nope, that's not happening. Bring him back over here. Get a little movement going. Little, okay, all right. Nope, nope, now I'm bringing him back. Nope, nope. Yeah, no, oh, there you go. I got it. All right, good. I got it. I got Jesus with me. It's all good. Nope. Now Joseph is like any man. What's going on? What's happening here? Yeah, I, I, WWF is having that. Taking her down in the manger. All right. Anyway. So Christmas is supposed to be a joyous time, <laughs> even when baby Jesus gets taken out of the manger. And I want to say this, Christians are supposed to be the most joyful people of all, and not just during Christmas, but all year round. Look at this scripture right here, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says this, always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Notice this period. Not even comma. It's a period. Always be joyful. Period. Never stop praying. Period. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for, for you who belong to Christ Jesus. How many people belong to Jesus this morning? So God's word is, come on, God's word is always be joyful. Don't stop praying 
and be thankful in all circumstances. Now, I don't thank God for the negative report I got from a doctor this week. I thank my God that He is God in the midst of a negative report, all right? I don't thank God for the disease that I'm fighting. I thank God that in the midst of the disease that I'm fighting, notice my terminology, I'm not taking the identity of the disease. I'm not saying that's who I am for the rest of my life. I'm saying I'm fighting this disease in Jesus' name. And so I'm thanking my God that in the midst of me fighting this crippling disease, that my God is sovereign and He's Lord. Listen, church, too many people, blood-bought believers of the sons and daughters of the King, are claiming things over themselves that are never, ever to be claimed over themselves. The only thing you and I should ever claim over ourselves is what the Word of God says. Always be joyful. Look at your neighbor and say, always be joyful. That could get somebody in trouble right there and look at them out. No, let me say this real quick to kind of we go there a little bit. Don't confuse happiness with joy. Hello. Don't confuse happiness with joy. There was a survey done recently, uh, a world survey. I'm usually reading to you guys national surveys. But there was an international survey that, that was done recently of 10,000 people of the four things they wanted in life. The top four things that people want in life, number one was happiness, number two was money, number three, rightfully so around the world, was freedom. But I did find that interesting that freedom was not number one. And then number four was peace. Happiness, money, freedom, and peace. Listen, happiness, I love being happy. Okay, happy's good. We should, we should be a happy people, a happy, joyful people. But let me tell you about happiness. Happiness is an emotion. It comes and it goes. It's kind of, it's uh, basically connected to maybe what you have or don't have. It's, it's an external thing where joy is internal, all right? Joy is a byproduct of God. Joy is God. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Happiness is an emotion. Now, by the way, who gave us our emotions? Well, our Heavenly Father. And we have all kinds of emotions, and there are times that we're sad, and there are times that we're happy. But happiness, don't confuse happiness with joy. Happiness results from the possession or attainment of something. What we might consider good, joy is found in the Lord who is always good. Let me say that again to get that in your spirit. Happiness results from the possession or the attainment of maybe what one thinks is good or considers good. Joy is found in the Lord who is always good. There is a huge difference between happiness and joy. I want you to be a happy people, but, but I'm telling you, in the heart, when everything goes, and when you're going through tough stuff, the real thing that keeps you going is the joy of the Lord, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Happiness is an emotion, because I'm hap happy, happy, and there's nothing wrong with being happy, but happiness is quickly fleeing. And it can come and it can go. But the joy of the Lord, is the way I put it in my journal, thinking about this week, is a lifelong companion. Even through the most difficult of situations. Joy. Somebody say joy. joy. Joyce Myers says this about joy and happiness. She says, many people have no strength today because they are seeking the happiness of the world instead of the joy of the Lord. They're seeking happiness. Ron Dulsler, who came here, what, what was it, about a couple months ago on a first Wednesday night, and he said there was an inter uh, a recent survey done to people in America, and the number one thing people want in life is happiness. And I looked at that when he said that, I wrote it down, and I was like, you know, what a wonderful opportunity to introduce people to joy, who is in the person of Jesus Christ. Because if people really think about happiness and what it really is, you're only happy when you have the stuff. 
Or when you have whatever that stuff is, whether it's materialism or money or this or that, or everybody's together and then when everybody's gone, you're sad, or when everybody is actually nice to each other, then you're happy, but when things don't go so well, then you're sad and dejected. And, but no, I'm telling you, even when things don't go so well, you can still have the joy of the Lord in your heart. Joy. It's a fruit of the Spirit of God. Lisa already said it. Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. I love how he says that. I will say it again. Rejoice. Don't rejoice. Let me tell you what. I thank God for the victories. All of us have had great victories. But I, a long time ago, I used to struggle. Uh, just kind of be real for a moment. Uh, I feel like I'm always real with y'all. But I used to struggle when I first started ministry. Someone would come up to me and say, Great message. Really spoke to me. And I would struggle in, how, in what, what to say. You know, like, um, it's all God. And, and, and it is. It's always God. Uh, and I, I would say things like that. And just really from my heart. And I would struggle, and I had one person even tell me, hey, sometimes you need to say, you know, thank you when someone gives you a comment. And I just said, I struggle when someone says that because it, it is all God. I really, I really mean that. There's no way I can talk without him talking through me. And, and then one person came up to me and shared. They said, Chris, you are a vessel. God is using you. You are full of joy and life, and it's, it's, it's who you are. So when people say, hey, great job, thank God for that moment, Thank them for their, their words. They don't have to say anything. And then go alone by yourself and give God all the glory. And I'm telling you, we've got to be a people. Thank God for the great little victories that each one of us have. Thank God for those moments. But in the end, don't rejoice in the moments. Rejoice in the Lord. Don't rejoice in just the victory. Oh, we got a victory. Don't rejoice in just the victory. Rejoice in the Lord who gives you the victory. Whatever's going on. Are you, are you, I hope I'm saying it like uh, what's in my heart. We've got to recognize and understand everything that is good comes from God. We need to be people that rejoice in God. Don't just rejoice in good situations. If you get a Christmas bonus this Christmas, praise God, but let me tell you what, rejoice in the Lord. They, I mean, you, whoa, I got a bonus. That's awesome, and I pray you do. That's awesome. Whatever. If you get a raise, if you get a promotion, whatever happens, praise God that you got it, but rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. You get a good report from the doctor. Thank you, doctor. Get off the phone. You do a little hallelujah dance right there off the phone. Thank you, Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. And then he says, and I say it again, rejoice. Are you with me this morning? As we head into 2018, which my goodness is right here in front of us. Don't, let's don't be a people that seek happiness, which is quickly fading. Let's seek the one who will never leave us nor forsake us. Let's seek the one who is joy. Don't, let me just say this. Don't even go looking for joy. Just go looking for him and you will find joy. I want to say that again. Don't go looking for joy. Where's joy? Where, I just need some joy. Where's joy? Well, it's not coming from the Christmas presents under the tree. That's called happiness. That's, a, that's an emotion. Joy is a lifelong companion through even the darkest of days. Joy. Augustine said this, to find God is to find the fountain of all joy. Look at your neighbor and say, don't lose your joy. <laughs> Can't even say it without smiling. Joy does so much more for us than just makes you feel good. It strengthens our witness. One of, my, one of my sisters in the prayer room was telling a story just recently of a friend that she's known for a long time. And just, just you know, she's just gone through a lot of stuff and didn't know the Lord. And even she even taught religion, but it was all up here. And she didn't go into the detail of, of what happened, but it went from here finally at 70 years old, to hear, And the woman is a different person. And she said it was her countenance. I'm telling you, when you encounter the living God, the Jesus that Brother Ron was talking about, the greatest gift of all earlier, when you encounter Jesus, you can't help but be changed. 
So much so, it's from the inside out, and your countenance changes. Your countenance is not just your face. It's literally the aroma or the glow of who you are. It, it's literally the Jesus in you. And so literally joy, when you're full of joy in your life, even if you're going through difficult times, it's, it literally improves your countenance, your mental state, your health. I'm not just jabbing you folks. Listen, look on the screen right here. Dr. Cynthia Thake says this. When you are joyful, by the way, she's not even a Christian. When you are joyful, your whole body benefits, especially your heart and mind. In fact, research shows that joyful people have less chance of having a heart attack. Healthier blood pressure, lower cholesterol, weight management, better sleep. Come on, somebody. And decreased stress levels. We need some joy up in the house. After reading that, I was like, oh, Lord, I need some joy. I'm afraid that Christians have lost their joy. The joy of the Lord. The joy of your salvation. How about this? The joy of your deliverance. I'm so thankful I'm not the man I used to be. And it's because of the deliverance of the Lord in my life. The addictions have been broken off years back. I'm so thankful I'm not that man anymore. I didn't do anything but just say, God, help me. And he deli- Aren't you glad you're not the same person? The church, capital C, has lost her joy. Her joy. The supernatural strength we need for this journey is found in the joy of the Lord. Think about it. The highs and lows of life. The ups and downs. The victories and the defeats. All those things that we encounter. The heartache. The pain. The victories. The triumphs. The battles. We need the joy of the Lord. Look at this on the screen right here. Nehemiah 8.10 says this. We were talking about Nehemiah earlier. Man, I mean, the people of Israel, they were devastated. They lost everything. Jerusalem was besieged. The the walls were destroyed. The city was destroyed. They're trying to rebuild it. They found the, the Holy Scriptures. And Nehemiah says this. Look right here. Nehemiah continued, Go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. Look at this. This is a sacred day before our, our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, I want to say this. No wonder hell works overtime to steal our joy. No joy, no strength. If we lose our joy, we lose our strength. And I can't imagine without the strength of the Lord to go through the day and the burdens of life. And the problems that you and I encounter, we need the strength of the Lord. Thus, we need the joy of the Lord overflowing in our life. And by the way, we're kind of being introspective right now. We're just talking about us, the church. What about a lost and dying world that desperately is looking for happiness when they really need the joy of the Lord? Joy. The fact is that you and I, we all, have gone through, will go through very dark, painful seasons in our lives where for many of us at times, maybe it's just me, the heavens feel like brass. I can't see clearly, which is scary for me as a visionary. When you're going through those painful times, you don't have answers to your questions and it feels like the walls are caving in. Anybody been there before? I want to say something to you. We need to be a people that are real with other people. And I think we talked about this in our prayer room. I think that there are Christians, maybe even people in this room, that you are afraid to tell someone else how you're really doing. To really just say, I'm really struggling. Can I tell you what? It's okay to tell someone you're really struggling and know, though, it doesn't end on the struggle. Like, if, if I was in a conversation with someone, I'm really hurting, I'm going through a really tough time. But I know that God's on the throne, and it's His joy and His strength that carry me through it. 
We don't end on the struggle. We don't end, we, we don't put a period where God says there's a comma. We can say all these things and say, I'm dealing with this, I'm struggling this, I'm fighting this. Notice the action, by the way. The action would be, I'm struggling. It's not, I've given up. Church, the enemy would love for you to give up. Give up on your marriage. Give up on your life. That's how he's taking out all these young people. Give up on that kid that's just gone too far out. Get so frustrated and hurt. Give up on that parent. Give up on the situation at work. I'll never get a raise. I'll never get promoted like he was just talking about. Don't give up. That problem, that addiction, that situation, do not give up. If hell is hitting your home, then how about hitting back? I'm telling you, don't give up. We've been there. We've done that. I could write the book on, a whole book on pain. And I know it's not the end. That's what I hate about it. But we've got to recognize and understand, even in our pain, the joy of the Lord can be there. Now look, I, I believe that Christians should be the happiest people, the most passionate people. I believe we should be a smiling people. But there are times that I've been hurting so bad that it was really hard to smile. And for a long time, I felt because I was a pastor, I could tell no one. That was a lie from the pit, because I'm actually just a man. And I believe a lot of Christians feel that way. We get so religious that we don't tell people how we're really doing. There may be spouses in here that the other spouse doesn't know how you're really, really doing. And I want to encourage you to go there as hard as it is. Someone said change really only happens when you have the brutally honest conversations. And I believe that. But I also believe in the midst of our pain, there can be this unexpressible joy and strength that will get you through the darkest of nights. The dark nights. Anybody been there? Well, David was there. Look at this. Psalm 6, 6. He says this. I am worn out from sobbing. All night I flood my bed with weeping, drenching it with my tears. My vision is blurred by grief. My eyes are worn out because of all my enemies. Sorry, that was 6 and 7. Here's, here's what we have to understand, though, about the dark nights. Because it said that weeping is in the night, joy comes in the morning. Night is not a 24-hour thing. It is a season. It's, it's a season. Somebody say season. And what do we know about seasons? Seasons come and they go. So you've, for those that have been here for a while, you've heard my story. We all have a story filled with pain. Some of you in that story now. May God give you grace and strength to endure. And some of you have come out of a painful season. And I hate to say it, that there are more painful seasons coming. It is this journey we called life. But God gives us the grace and the strength to endure and go through the season. we got to go through it. Now hear me, church. really want you to hear me on this. Too many Christians park and build a house in the season of the night. They park and they build a house in the season of pain. That is not the will of God. You don't ever park in your pain. God wants to take you through that. He wants to heal you of it so you can be a comfort and healing to others. So whatever season you find yourself in right now, keep on keeping on. Go through. Stay the course. Press on with God's strength. That's why we desperately need the joy of the Lord. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't bail. God is with you. You know, I said I, I'm a visionary, and so ever since I was a kid, I filled up notepads with things I saw in my imagination, things I'd see around town. I just would draw things out. It's just always been that way. Um, and when I went through my painful season, I got really scared because I, 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 never, I couldn't see anything anymore. I mean, I could see my wife. I wasn't physically blind, but I was spiritually blind. I, I couldn't see anything. All I could see was my pain. 
And that's what the enemy wants to do. He just magnifies it, magnifies it, magnifies it. And I found myself, I know the Word of God, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I started wallowing around and sulking in my pain instead of in the grace and strength of God rising up and saying, I, my heart still hurts, but I choose to rejoice in you, O God. I'm telling you, we've got to be a people in our pain that we verbalize the promises of God. We've got to say the promises of God even when we're hurting. Because the enemy, listen to me, would love for you to stay silent. I just read about it earlier. He'd love for you to give up and continue to wear that cloak of mourning. M-O-U-R. Pastor Jermaine, would you come up here for just a second? I did give you a heads up about this. So um, I'm going to take your jacket off. Come up here so everybody can see you. Let's just go ahead and take this nice jacket off. I, I, Take it off. <laughs> All right, so Jermaine, I know this man very well, has gone through his own pain, as everyone in this room has. In the Bible, what I just said earlier, he takes off the cloak of mourning. I, I, I want to read it to you again, again in your spirit. He literally said, Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. You have turned my morning into joyful dancing. Now listen to this. This is David saying it to God. You have taken away. I love that action. You have taken away. Because we want to hang on to it. I want you to hang on. I'm not going to rip it, I promise. But yeah, yeah. And and it's almost like, no, I want to to hang on to this pain. This fits me. This pain, this is who I am. No, it's not. What your father did to you or what your mother did to you, in their own ignorance, what a coach did to you, what someone did to you, what they said to you, that is not who you are. But we want to hold on to it. But God says, David says, you took it away. You took away the cloak of mourning. And then what did he do? He didn't use the same cloak. He said, oh, I got this nice one over here in the closet. Let me bring it over here. Just got it dry cleaned in the heavenly dry cleaners. And here you go, put you. And he has given me. Yeah. <laughs> given me a cloak of joy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Can I tell you what? Please allow God to take it off. Now listen to me. Hear me on these last few minutes. This is very important. You press in, lean in. Everybody say lean in. Not not so much physically, but lean into this. This is very important. All of us will go through night seasons. I cannot tell you how long they are. Just don't make them any longer than they need to be. We will all go through dark night seasons, painful times in our lives that we have no answers. We can't see clearly. We we, we just, it's it's hard to even express in the words in those moments, in those seasons. Uh, You feel alone. You're, you're constantly hurting. You have to fight just to get out of the bed. I'm telling you, it's just, it's hard. It's really, really hard. And if it wasn't for God's strength, my goodness, and His hope and His joy, we couldn't even get out of the bed. But I'm telling you, when the morning comes, let her come. The sun will rise. The sun will rise. Don't, if you park in your pain, you will never see the sunshine. If you build a house in your pain, if you build a bench in your pain, I'm just going to sit here for a while. I looked up the word wallowing, and it literally means just to move around all in. A lot of people are wallowing in their pain, and that's exactly what the enemy wants. Listen, I'm telling you. I know the pain is real. I have felt it. You have felt it. But the pain is not our destiny. The pain is not the end. The pain is not a a period. It's just a comma. It's a but God. And that's why we definitely need the joy of the Lord who is our strength. Don't build your house in an area where you literally have an address that says 101 Misery Lane. Uh, one of our families here at the church have a beautiful German Shepherd. And uh, I, I love this dog. 
and um, and she has a a, a wound um, on her on her on her arm, and there's some bandage on it. And the other day when we went to their home, um, we sh- she was out in the front yard and she was licking the bandages because a lot of animals, not just dogs but cats or a lot of animals, they will lick their wounds. The problem is they don't need to be licking that wound or it's not going to heal. That picture came in my head yesterday when we were praying in here is that many of us are really good at licking our wounds. We have made it who we are. I'm telling you, if, if this can get in your spirit, I wish I could go into your soul right now and say, get that thing out because that thing is poisoning you. That whole licking your wounds, whatever that old quote is, no, you're not supposed to lick your wounds. And, and, and the pain doesn't make you stronger. God can use it to make you stronger, but just holding on to pain doesn't make you stronger. That's the message of the world, by the way. you got to let God do His thing. We have to let God do His thing. God doesn't want us to be a bitter people. He wants us to be a better people, a healthy people. Walking in the joy of the Lord. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. Some of you are in a night season right now, and I would say this to you. Two things. You are not alone. And number two, that the morning is coming. Before we end, I want to to remind you of someone that had a night season. Jesus. Did you know that Jesus went through a night? He went through a night season. Look right here on on the screen before we close. It says this. When he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, you know it. But let the words come to you. Remember, we celebrate his birth on Christmas Day, but actually he was born to die. Now look at this. They went to the olive, gro- the olive grove called Gethsemane. And Jesus said, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became, now look at this, this is the Son of God. He became deeply troubled and distressed. And look what he says. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief. To the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Now I want you to, I want you to stay on that for just a second. Look what it says. My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Next verse. He went on a little further. And look at this. And fell to the ground. You ever fell to the ground just in pain and hopelessness and like, God, you got to come through. See, this was the Son of God, but this was the Son of God in man. He prayed that if it were, look at this. This is how in that moment of, of pain, emotional pain, he prayed if it were possible for the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, that word there is really Daddy. Daddy, if it's possible. Could you remove this from me, this plan that you and I talked about? Is there another plan? I'm adding words now. Lord, the cup that I'm about to drink of, this suffering I'm about to go through, is there something else we could do? He says, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. And then we know the rest of that night and into the morning, we know that he went through a horrible beat down all the way to the cross, the crucifixion. But Hebrews tells us something. Hebrews 12 tells us, it says, because of the, say it with me, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. You know what that joy was? Us. Being in right standing with his father. That's why he came. Because of the joy. Of what, you know what I believe? This is just me. That when Jesus was carrying that cross and eventually he had to give it to someone else because he was so weak and beat down. That he saw us. He pictured me. He pictured you. He pictured us at all time. Being in right standing with his father. The Bible says he endured the cross disregarding its shame, and now he is seated 
in the place of honor beside God's throne. We have to recognize and understand that the night will end. The night will come to an end and to a conclusion. And the morning is coming. And what comes with the morning is joy. Somebody say joy. You need to get that word in your spirit. That joy. The joy of the Lord. He's your strength. I love in this final thought here, I love Bildad's response to Job. After Job had lost pretty much almost everything. And Job is struggling. Look right here, final thing today on this message. His response, he says this to Job. But if you pray to God and seek the favor of the Almighty, and if you are pure and live with integrity, He will surely, the Lord, He will surely rise up, and look at this, and restore your happy home. And though you started with little, you will end with much. And I love the way verse 21 ends. He will once again fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Amen? Church, it is the will of God for us to walk in His joy. To live in His joy. To overflow with His joy. To be His hands and feet of joy in a world that is desperately looking for the wrong thing. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, let's pray together.